Chapter 566 One cannot expect to accomplish major tasks if they are not willing to take risks. Shi Xue Jin had explained exactly how Lu Xu tricked the big families. He knew that Nalan Kei had coordinated with external forces throughout the deal. He had even done research on the tools that the families had given Lu Xu. In other words, in the seven days that I was gone, Luo City has become the country's largest black market goods center, right? Nia Ting said. Shi Xue Jin's expression was somewhat awkward. Ha! <laughs> ha! Something like that. From Nia Ting's distress, plus 1,000. Even if the Heavenly Network could no longer suppress the black market, and the fact that they were no longer ruthless to the secret practitioners who brought magical stones from overseas, but they could not be brazen in their actions either. Was this a black market or a farmer's market? Why not just call it a wholesale training resource market? The atmosphere grew heavy. Shi Xue Jin thought about it and said, why not let him go to school? He is creating a lot of trouble now. Mia Ting sat on the stone bench in the courtyard and rubbed his temples. What exactly is he thinking? Don't you understand? Shi Xue Jin had no choice but to explain to Mia Ting. He was very unhappy with your decision. Lu Xu most likely does not want his life to be controlled. Look at his desire to travel when he just joined us. Now that he has somewhat integrated into the organization, you give him a responsibility. No wonder he has rebelled. Lock his account for now. We need to ask him what he wants. Nya Ting calmed down. He wants a sword, said Shi Xue Jin immediately. Nya Ting looked at Shi Xue Jin with uncertainty. It is because he could not find a mythical object suitable for him overseas? So now his plan is to get it from me? From Nya Ting's distress, plus 999. I feel that we can give that sword to him. Sure Xue Jin eyes lit up once again. It might suit him. Hearing Sure Xue Jin's words, Nya Ting regained his absolute rationality. No. Why? That sword is too important. But you wanted to give that sword to Li Xianyi, right? Sure Xue Jin said, Lu Xu is still young. He may even surpass Li Xianyi. But the condition of giving the sword to Li Xianyi was him accepting the position of Heavenly King. Nia Ting shook his head. One cannot expect to accomplish major tasks if they are not willing to take risks. Sure Xue Jin said. I'll think about it. Nia Ting said, that's right. Help me to lock Li Xiao's account too. Don't accept any of his explanations. Besides that, get Zhong Yutong to deploy people to take over the Route 301 black market. Lu Xu and Li Xiao will earn 10% of the profits from each person annually. This was Nia Ting's reason for his actions. Li Xiao had gone beyond his work scope. He could not break the law while acting as law enforcement. But Li Xiao's contributions towards the black market could not go unnoticed. Thus, Nia Ting would not allow Li Xiao to work for nothing. This was the reason why Lu Xu dared to have dealings with Nia Ting. How should they deal with Lu Xu? How could they make him willing to become the ninth heavenly king? This was giving Nia Ting a headache. If Nia Ting told the big families that he was offering the position of a heavenly king, wouldn't they go crazy over it? Why was it so hard when it came to Lu Xu? At first, Nia Ting still felt that victory was within reach. Now, all he was left with was a headache. But Nia Ting felt that he could not just accept Lu Xu's counterattack. The two of them were not finished. Shi Xue Jin sat by the side and innocently continued reading his book. Since Nia Ting had returned, he was too lazy to continue dealing with Lu Xu. Shi Xue Jin changed his ringtone to I sorry, the number you are dialing is unavailable. This trick that Zhong Yutong had taught him worked well. It was peaceful and quiet. Nia Ting did not care about Lu Xu temporarily. Lu Xu happily transferred 500,000 to Lu Xiaoyu's account. Seven days after Lu Xu started receiving distress points from Nia Ting, Lu Xu suddenly received a notification from the bank that his account had been frozen. 
Before he could do anything, Yu Mingyu had brought his team to the Route 301 black market. Lu Xu was curious. Have you come to take control of this black market? Hmm. Yu Mingyu was somewhat curious. From Lu Xu's tone, it was as if he had known that the Heavenly Network would come to take control of the black market. Lu Xu had done his preparations. How could the Heavenly Network allow outsiders to manage the black market in Luo City's sacred training location? Suddenly, Li Ixiao's shriek came from the room beside them. Nya Ting. We are at daggers drawn. Ha! <laughs> ha! Lu Xu was happy. He knew that Nye Ting would not let Li Xiao off. Hand it to me. Lu Xu stretched out his hand. Yu Mingyu was dumbfounded. Hand what? The tool that Heavenly King Nye has given to me. Lu Xu laughed. Nye Ting had not frozen his account for seven days straight. This meant that Nye Ting did not know what to give Lu Xu. But now that his account was frozen, it meant that Nye Ting had brought something of equivalent value. Yu Mingyu wordlessly waved behind him. A Heavenly Network member carried a long wooden box and passed it to Lu Xu. Lu Xu opened the box and was shocked. You are not playing around with me, right? Why would we play around with you? Yu Mingyu was not happy. There is nothing in this box. The box felt rather heavy when Lu Xu carried it, it was empty when opened. No, Lu Xu suddenly realized that there was something in the box. And that something was transparent. Yu Mingyu said, Heavenly King Ye said that this sword is called the Chunging. It has been passed down from ancient times and recognizes its owner by blood. Please treasure it. Lu Xu was truly dumbfounded. Chunging of the Ten Great Swords? Didn't it disappear after the spring and autumn period? He knew about the Ten Great Swords of China. The origins of the Cheng'ing were mysterious and unknown. It had been used by Shang Tianzi, as well as Kong Zhou of the spring and autumn period. It was said that the sword could only be seen during the brief moment when day turned to night. After that, it would become transparent. It was not that Lu Xu completely could not see the Cheng'ing in the wooden box. Upon closer inspection, he could see the faint outline of the sword. Heavenly King Ye said that this sword is no trivial matter. You must have patience while refining the sword. As Yu Mingyu finished speaking, he thought of something else. We will give you and Heavenly Kingly shares from the market, but you no longer have to worry about the management of this market. He was showing Lu Xu the door. Lu Xu smacked his lips. He carried the box and left. He walked quickly as he was slightly worried that Li Xiao would react and cause him trouble. He would leave Yu Mingyu to suffer Li Xiao's rage. He might even enjoy it. Lu Xu did not know whether this fabled Chong Ying sword would make up for his losses. But he knew that rather than leaving behind so much money, it was better to exchange it for a weapon that could protect his life. Such a high-leveled sword should have sword energy, right? Chapter 567, Chang Ying Sword Spirit There were records of the Chang Ying Sword in history. It was said that it was found during the Shang Dynasty and subsequently kept by Kong Zhou. It was said that an ordinary person had accidentally found the Chang Ying Sword by a tree trunk. There was nothing unusual about the tree under the invisible aura blade. It was only after the person walked further away that the tree suddenly collapsed with a crash. Of course, Lu Xu felt that a lot of the things he knew had been passed down by word of mouth. He would still have to find out the truth by himself. He remembered Yu Mingyu's words that the sword recognized its owner by blood. When Lu Xu left, he had even reminded him that he could only do so when day turned to night and vice versa. There were only two chances per day. Thus, the first thing that he did when he reached home was to observe this sword. Lu Xu sat in the backyard of his apartment. The Chung Ying sword lay quietly in the wooden box. Lu Xu waited for the arrival of night. He was not afraid that he would miss the chance. Wasn't it said before? The Chung Ying sword would only reveal its true appearance when day turned to night and vice versa. 
the dusk rays shone like a magnificent jewel. The moment the sun sunk below the horizon, a thin and slender sword appeared in the originally empty box in front of Lu Xu. The sword was semi-transparent, like colored glaze. The streamlined shape made Lu Xu touched. It was just too beautiful. Even the blade of the Cheng Ying sword was unified with the rest of the sword. Just looking at the exterior of the sword, Lu Xu felt that the money Nye Ting had confiscated was worth it. The heavenly network was still somewhat reasonable. Lu Xu gently placed his index finger on the sword blade. Even if his body was as tough as that of a class B, the blade quickly created a wound on his finger. The blood flowing from his finger flowed into the transparent Chang Ying sword with huge celestial powers. It was like a drop of blood that fell into the water. There was a tinkling sound, before it spread like smoke. Lu Xu's senses suddenly linked with the Cheng Ying sword. The twilight disappeared very quickly. The Cheng Ying sword also returned to its transparent form, but Lu Xu could sense its presence very clearly. Earlier on, Lu Xu was still worried that this sword was too transparent. What would he do if he accidentally misplaced it? Lu Xu suspected that after the spring and autumn period, it had disappeared because someone had misplaced it and could not find it. But Lu Xu now realized that after the ritual of dripping blood and recognizing the owner, the owner of the sword could sense its presence. He did not have to be worried about hurting himself. Lu Xu was also amused at his overly anxious self. The blood circulated in the Cheng Ying sword like an ocean current until it had dissipated into every corner of the sword. Suddenly, something strange happened. A figure wearing a white robe floated from within the Cheng Ying sword. Sword Spirit Lu Xu was pleasantly surprised. This sword was a mythical object that possessed a sword spirit. Lu Xu finally determined that this sword was worth the money he had lost. But he did not know what function this sword spirit had. Lu Xu fixed his eyes upon the sword spirit. The sword spirit was a male. The white robe that he wore made him seem like he was not from the modern times. What made Lu Xu surprised was that this sword spirit was completely in human form. Earlier, he had encountered the black dragon from the black dragon spear and the golden snake. This was Lu Xu's first time seeing a soul sword in human form, besides the snowy mountain sword spirit. The sword spirit was handsome and light-hearted. There was a purple lotus in between his eyebrows. He was very elegant. Finally, I see the light of day, the man said as he looked at the world in front of him. Lu Xu suddenly asked, you can speak? What is your name? He had seen other sword spirits in human form, but this was the only one who could speak. Didn't this mean that this sword spirit was very impressive? Lu Xu was overjoyed. The handsome man turned to look at Lu Xu. He said calmly, you can call me Hai Gongzi. Hai Gongzi? What a strange name. Lu Xu asked, what abilities do you have? Lu Xu did not sense any waves of aura from Hai Gongzi. But Lu Xu knew that Hai Gongzi definitely had some method of blocking waves of aura, like Nalan K. Hai Gongzi furrowed his eyebrows and asked, Are you the current owner of the Cheng Ying sword? Lu Xu hurriedly nodded his head. Yes, 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 I am. You are not suitable. The moment Hai Gongzi finished speaking, he returned to the Cheng Ying sword like smoke. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Heck! What a troublesome sword spirit! Showing this kind of attitude to your owner? Come out! Lu Xu roared in a frenzy. Did you hear me? Come out! Lu Xu's voice was so loud that his neighbor came to take a look in alarm. The moment he stepped out, Lu Xu turned his head and said, Not you. Go back. His neighbor was dumbfounded. From Wang Zhao's distress, plus 199. Lu Xu once again looked at the Cheng Ying sword. His connection with the sword had not been broken because of Hai Gongzi's hate. Thus, Lu Xu was very sure that he had become the official owner of the sword. This Cheng Ying sword was his now. 
This also meant that the sword's normal functions would not be affected. It was just that the sword spirit was somewhat troublesome. This was not a big deal. At most, the sword spirit would not listen to his instructions. But Lu Xu could not bear this humiliation. Sword spirit, who do you hate? Earlier, he had still thought that Nye Ting was nice enough to give him an ancient mythical object. But it turns out that it was a trick. Ha! <laughs> ha! No wonder Nye Ting had told you Mingyu to remind Lu Xu that he needed to be patient while refining the sword. What, did he have to persuade Hai Gongzi patiently? As if. Lu Xu thought about it for a long time. Suddenly, he decided to drop another drop of blood. Hai Gongzi once again appeared as a result. His gaze was grave and stern. In the future, do not call me for no reason. Lu Xu did not even get to shout at Hai Gongzi before Hai Gongzi returned to the sword. <laughs> Lu Xu once again dropped a drop of blood and Hai Gongzi appeared once again. This time, Hai Gongzi was visibly suppressing his anger. Lu Xu was unhappy. Who are you trying to trick? Don't you know that I'm the owner of the Cheng Ying sword now? Don't you have any awareness as a sword spirit? Hai Gongzi said with a dark expression. I don't want to fight you, but don't provoke me either. It is best that we live in peace with each other. You are still too weak to become a suitable owner of the Cheng Ying sword. Hai Gongzi prepared to return to the Cheng Ying sword. But in less than one second, Lu Xu squeezed out another drop of blood. Hai Gongzi had not even fully returned into the sword before he came out again. Hai Gongzi was confused. Lu Xu laughed coldly. I can't help you now. I don't want to fight you? Didn't it mean that as a sword spirit, you could not fight your owner? Hai Gongzi knew that he had been seen through. There was no point threatening Lu Xu. Hai Gongzi was very unhappy with the person in front of him. As Lu Xu had thought, he could not fight the owner of the Cheng Ying sword. This was his limit as a sword spirit. Chapter 568, Killed 1000, but lost 800. The capital, Lu Hai Lane. Ling Jing Lane was where the headquarters of the Heavenly Network stood. This was also where Nye Ting and Shi Xue Jin resided. Under normal circumstances, very few Heavenly Network members would come here. Those who were able to come were not Class C experts like Hao Jichao or Zhong Yutong. They were important figures who had jurisdiction over a region. The courtyard was peaceful and quiet. The plants were growing new shoots. Sure Xue Jin was not reading this time. He had placed a tea set on the stone table and was slowly brewing tea. Nye Ting sat by the side, rapidly glancing through the recent documents. He had three identities. He was the East's top expert, the leader of the Heavenly Network, as well as the principal of the capital Daoyuan class. Ordinary people would find it hard to strike a balance between these three roles. Everyone had a limit to their energy. Most could not be in two places at once. But Nye Ting was different. His efficiency when it came to official affairs was unparalleled. I have delivered the Cheng Ying sword, Nye Ting said calmly. Teacher had said that only the honest can use the sword. Lu Xu is not bad, but I can't say that he's honest either. Do you think teacher will blame us? Sure Xue Jin laughed. My dad is not that honest himself. There's no point in having so many requirements. Don't look at me. If I go see him, he will say the same thing too. You may be afraid, but I am not. To Nye Ting, the Cheng Ying sword was an important item entrusted to him by his teacher. In terms of strength, even the Xian Ting sword could not compare to the Cheng Ying sword. But Shi Xue Jin suddenly laughed. What expression do you think Lu Xu is making now while facing Hai Gongzi? My dad said that Hai Gongzi has a bad temper. You have to follow him. Back then, my paternal grandfather was so upset that he threatened to commit suicide. But he still had to speak well about the sword to others. Nye Ting broke into a small smile before he covered his mouth. 
If it were not because of that, I would be unwilling to give the Chung Ing sword to him. Let him deal with it. On the contrary, I want to know how a strong-willed person like him would react to Hai Gongzi. The atmosphere between Lu Xu and Hai Gongzi was very stiff. Lu Xu asked coldly, Are you going to obey me? Hai Gongzi's white robe moved by itself, even without any wind. He picked his eyebrows. There has not been anyone who has dared to ask me such a question. You are the first. Lu Xu was very sure that the Cheng Ying sword Nye Ting had given him was meaningful. But Nye Ting was definitely not at ease. Perhaps he was waiting to see how Lu Xu would react. Lu Xu had used the case of the black market and the magical stones to fight back. He did not believe that Nye Ting would let it slip, just like how he could not accept being controlled by Nye Ting. Now, there was a war between Lu Xu and Nye Ting. Lu Xu could not lose. There was no one who dared to ask you so, because you had not met me then, Lu Xu said coldly. He had been busy patronizing Hai Gongzi that he did not notice the distress points in his system's back end. He took a look and realized that there were distress points. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 399. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Ao Hai. This was a very rare name. Lu Xu had a feeling that he had only seen this name a few times in Journey to the West. Hai Gongzi smiled and sat on the chair in the backyard. No worries. If you don't let me return to the sword, then I won't. Lu Xu had indeed humiliated him till he could not bear it. Lu Xu had summoned him multiple times using his blood. He had to go out. But now that he did not return to the sword, what could Lu Xu do? The moment Hai Gongzi sat down, he saw Lu Xu carry a bucket of washed potatoes from the house. Hai Gongzi was shocked. He had an unpleasant premonition. You. Before he could finish speaking, he saw Lu Xu take the Cheng Ying sword to peel potatoes. Hai Gongzi was furious. How can you use the Cheng Ying sword to peel potatoes? I have never seen someone use the Cheng Ying sword to peel a potato even after all these years. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu laughed. It can't be that there were no potatoes in China during the Shang Dynasty and the spring and autumn period, right? This is common knowledge. Now that the Cheng Ying sword is in my hands, I can use it in any way I want to. Hai Gongzi seemed to be suppressing his rage. Lu Xu had been thinking about how to make Hai Gongzi angry. Earlier, he had even thought about a worse trick. But the problem was, he had to use this sword in the future as well. He had wanted to provide the sword with divine water. But to speak the truth, the benefits from doing so would not be as great. Anyway, he practiced the sword. It was not easy to get a mythical object without going through much trouble. Furthermore, Lu Xu liked the special characteristic of the sword, it was invisible. In the past, he had said that others assumed that he was a long-range fighter and would spare no effort in getting close to him. After they did so, he would suddenly become a close-range fighter. How scary was this? Now, it was different. With the Cheng Ying sword in his hand, when the opponent approached him, they might not even know how they had died. He really liked this sword, other than its sword spirit. Lu Xu even suspected that Nye Ting may have discussed with the sword spirit to humiliate Lu Xu. He felt that Nye Ting would certainly do something like this. Hai Gongzi looked at Lu Xu using the Cheng Ying sword to peel the potatoes. His expression grew darker and darker. After going through much pain seeing Lu Xu peel the potatoes, Lu Xu once again went into the kitchen. He appeared with a chopping board and some vegetables. He once again started chopping. Ever since Hai Gongzi had become a sword spirit, this was his first time seeing the Cheng Ying sword suffer such humiliation. If others received the Cheng Ying sword, wouldn't they treasure it? This was the reason for Hai Gongzi's current personality. No one had ever made him admit defeat like Lu Xu did. Finally, Hai Gongzi could take it no longer. 
he returned to the Chung'ing sword, but was once again summoned by Lu Xu's blood. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. What a dispute between a human and a sword spirit. Lu Xu wanted to teach Hai Gongzi and not let him go back, but Hai Gongzi insisted on going back. In less than two days, when Li Ixiao came to visit Lu Xu, he was taken aback. Lu Xu, what happened to you? You look terrible. Are you talking about yourself? Lu Xu replied feebly. His face was pale and his voice was soft. He was somewhat listless as well. He had not done anything serious. It was just that he had lost too much blood. Lu Xu and Ao Hai both had strong perseverance. This dispute had lasted for two days and two nights. Even Lu Xu, who had practically reached Class B, could not take it anymore. There was a truce just for today. Lu Xu looked at the peeled potatoes and cut vegetables in the courtyard. He had killed an enemy of 1,000, but lost 800. But Lu Xu was pleased with himself. Ao Hai could not match his strength. Ao Hai was going crazy from these two days. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. Chapter 569, Li Ixiao the Lobbyist In fact, Lu Xu felt that something was wrong too, as if Hai Gongzi was restraining himself. Lu Xu used to wonder whether Hai Gongzi had a card up his sleeve to rebel against his master, but it seemed unlikely given that Hai Gongzi had not used it after so many days. At the moment, Lu Xu felt more sorry for the piles of peeled potatoes and chopped vegetables than the loss of his blood. Bloody hell, he could never finish them all. Lu Xu turned to Li Ixiao and asked, Why are you here? Looking at Lu Xu's wasted and colorless face, Li Ixiao mumbled, It's Chinese New Year soon. I thought you wouldn't want to celebrate it alone, so I'd like to invite you over to my place for a dinner. Your place? Lu Xu was stunned. You can cook? You'll know it when you come, Li Ixiao said, pulling at Lu Xu's arm. Yet, Lu Xu was wondering what Li Ixiao was up to, for he was not really someone who would visit other people for no reason. Why? Was he suddenly feeling generous and hospitable today? What was more, an invitation to his own house? Li Ixiao lived in the Luo City Cultivation College dormitory which was specially built for Luo City Heavenly Network members and future teachers of the college. As a heavenly king, Li Ixia was entitled to a suite of three bedrooms and one dining room since the opening of the dormitory. However, the ownership of the suite belonged to the Heavenly Network. Lu Xu even bumped into Shi Fei inside the dormitory building. He met many familiar faces, staring curiously at him. All the buildings were ten story tall, and Li Ixiao lived on the tenth floor. At his doorstep, the door was suddenly opened just when Li Ixiao was about to retrieve his keys. In the next instant, Lu Xu was utterly dumbstruck by the sight of the face inside the house. He looked at Li Ixiao and turned to Nailin K, who was standing inside. You two are staying together. This was unimaginable. Back then, Lu Xu could feel Nailin K's deep feelings towards Li Xiao when they joined forces to trick the other five families, and he had indeed considered the possibility of their continued love affair. But he had certainly not expected it to happen so fast. Nailin K had an apron around her waist and a spatula in her hand. Nice to see you, Lu Xu. Come on in. Dinner's ready. Please wait for me to serve the dishes on plates. Lu Xu almost shuddered in shock. Since when had Nailin K become such a wife material? When Nailin K returned to the kitchen, Li Ixia winked at Lu Xu and announced proudly, What do you think? I've trained her well. Lu Xu was overwhelmed in astonishment. I didn't know you were capable of that. He had a tour around Li Ixiao's new house. Apparently, it had been carefully furnished because small items of decoration could never be Li Xiao's idea. He was such a coarse man. Lu Xu returned his gaze to Nailin K, who looked just like an ideal wife. Was this all real? Weren't they supposed to be fated enemies? Lu Xu found it hard to believe in horoscopes again. 
Dinner is ready, Naylan Kay called sweetly from the kitchen. Then, she walked into the dining room with two plates in her hands, stewed meatball with brown sauce and braised pork chops. They looked rather tasty. Suddenly Lu Xu's attention was attracted by a globe beside the TV desk. There was something strange about it, because there was a red protrusion on its surface. Out of curiosity and boredom, Lu Xu pressed it and, unexpectedly, the globe cracked open in its center. Instantly a stack of red RMB notes poured out from the broken globe. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Treasure hunt? Before he could recover from his shock, a new entry was registered in the background. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 999. Nalin K banged the two plates of dishes onto the table, her elegance and gentleness were both gone. On the contrary, Nalin K looked as black as thunder. Li Yixiao, didn't you promise to me that there were no more secret hordes? Li Yixiao tried his best to explain himself. Huh? I didn't put that in. Maybe it's been there since I bought it. After he finished the sentence, Li Yixiao picked up the money himself and carefully put it in Nalin K's pocket. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 999. It was a bloody accident, Lu Xu thought, who knew you had hidden your money in a globe? More importantly, Li Yixiao was living such a pathetic life and he'd actually been under Nalin K's control. In Lu Xu's heart, Li Yixiao's future mother-in-law appeared even more venerable now. Li Yixiao could not complain about Lu Xu in Nalin K's presence. Admittedly, though, Lu Xu enjoyed the dinner. Nalin K was a pretty good cook. But Lu Xu was aware that Li Yixiao must have a reason for the dinner invitation. It could never have been so simple. Halfway through the dinner, Li Yixiao suddenly asked, Lu Xu, since you are quite free recently. How about going for some overseas missions together with me? Lu Xu was surprised. Overseas? It's so dangerous. I'm still a student. You can't be a student anymore, can you? The admission test is over. I can sit for high school leaving examinations to enter normal key universities. I'm good at studies. Lu Xu picked a piece of pork chop with his chopsticks and stuffed it in his mouth. Nalin K had purposely chosen short ribs, whose bones could be easily picked out. Nalin K commented from the side, Why are you so fond of going overseas? What good does it do? Don't underestimate the danger out there. What can you do if you run into the saint or the one from the Department of Faith Theory? Li Yixiao's eyeballs couldn't stop rolling, as if he was getting anxious. Lu Xu deliberated about the possibility that Li Yixiao was actually a lobbyist sent by Nye Ting. Previously Nye Ting had used the same trick. Why? Nye Ting was now counting on Li Yixiao for persuading him to take charge of the overseas affairs of the Heavenly Network? Otherwise, why was Li Yixiao so eager to bringing him out of the country? Before they finished the dinner, Li Yixiao asked Lu Xu subtly a few more times, but was rejected without fail. Only then did Li Yixiao realize that Lu Xu was determined not to venture overseas. In fact, Lu Xu was not unwilling to go, but he did not want to be forced by Nye Ting. What for? The two of them were engaged in a power struggle now and he himself would not yield even if Li Yixiao was the lobbyist. After Lu Xu was gone, Nalin K eyed Li Yixiao sideways. Why are you so eager in bringing Lu Xu overseas with you? But Li Yixiao refused to tell her the truth. After a painful 30-minute interrogation, Li Yixiao finally gave away. Nye Ting said that he will only unfreeze my account if I convince Lu Xu to go with me. This Nye Ting, at the moment, Nalin K was the last person who would want Li Yixiao to venture overseas. Couldn't they just live their own lives together? After a long pause, she was suddenly reminded of a piece of advice suggested by her bestie, that children could bind men to their woman. Nalin Kate cleared her throat and asked, Li Yixiao, do you want a child? Li Yixiao was stunned. Want a child? Who's willing to give you their child? Nalin K was speechless. I mean, do you want a child with me? 
even if I go ask for a child with you, no one's willing to give away their child. Li Ixiao found her request ridiculous. Nalin Kay's face darkened. She stomped away to watch the TV. Never mind. If that's the case, our child would be a mentally disabled one anyway. Chapter 570 A Young Kasayapa Li Yixiao had spent more than a decade wandering about all corners of the country. It was his rich experience that had transformed him into a difficult heavenly king from the naive teenage boy he once was. No one knew how much he had been through, there was love and hatred, honesty and deception. At the moment, he was not yet ready to be a father, and that was why he had avoided to give Nalan K an answer. Back in those years, he used to be a salesperson in an organization producing fake drugs. In order to make a living, he pretended to be ignorant of the company's unethical doings, but was eventually chased out due to his super appetite. After so many years of hardship, Li Xiao believed that he had to be sufficiently prepared before he could welcome in a new life. Maybe one day, he could proudly announce to his master when he visited his grave that. Wait a second, where was his master's grave? Just when Li Xiao was indulging in his memories, Lu Xu had already reached home and begun singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Currently he and Hai Gongzi were in a truce, after which they would continue with another round of intense battle. How could he, Lu Xu, not be able to subdue an annoying sword spirit specially sent by Nye Ting? After midnight, Lu Xu went to the yard to practice his sword skills. This time, however, he used Cheng Ying's sword instead of a wooden one. After all, Cheng Ying's sword would be his weapon in the future, which made it necessary to familiarize himself with it during his daily practice. After a while, Lu Xu was drenched in sweat due to the intense practice. Suddenly Hai Gongzi emerged himself. He said to Lu Xu coldly, his robe flapping in the air, I did not expect you to be willing to continue with such basic practice given your current level. Impressive. Nonetheless, your swordplay is nothing close to aesthetic. I can teach you something if you beg me with full sincerity. As he spoke, an air of pure arrogance surrounded Hai Gongzi. Lu Xu rolled his eyes and retrieved another potato from his seal of lands. What position was he in to teach him? And he even hoped Lu Xu would beg him? How ridiculous! If you beg me with full sincerity, I can stop using Chang Ying's sword for this. Lu Xu grinned. From Hai Gongzi's distress, plus 399. Immediately, he had returned to the sword before Lu Xu finished peeling the potato. But that was not the end yet. Lu Xu believed that Hai Gongzi's haughty comment was a hint at war. Hence, he had decisively resumed the cycle of summoning Hai Gongzi with his blood and peeling potatoes in front of him. Lu Xu was getting paler and angrier as well. In comparison to other sword spirits who listened to their hosts obediently, why was this one such a pain in his ass? No way. It must be Nye Ting's fault. Lu Xu's school life had become completely peaceful as the end-of-term examinations were drawing to a close. In grade 12, even those who had no interest in studies were still willing to give it a try to test their hope at the final exams. As for Lu Xu, he was isolated from the rest. He had no intention to interact with others, and so was the reverse. All he was doing was revision of the entire syllabus on his own. People like Lu Xu would never let go of any potential opportunities. Unable to enter Luoshan Cultivation College, there were still ordinary universities. Unable to move his body during his fight with Takashima Tairatsu, he resorted to scraping his chi mountain with his will. Even if he fell off a cliff, he would slowly pull himself up from the abyss by driving his fingers into the hard rock surface. In fact, Lu Xu was an optimist, he would never be mired in utter despair no matter what happened. Occasionally, students would gather together to discuss the matter about the Luo City black market and those secret practitioners. A student who was not so academically inclined commented, I only learned about it yesterday that a friend of my dad is actually a secret practitioner. Over dinner, he said that actually aptitude is not that important, because many secret practitioners, who are deemed to be lacking in training potential by the heavenly network, can still practice their powers, though less efficiently. 
however, that doesn't affect their chances of success in the end. Moreover, they can make up for their disadvantage and aptitude by cultivation resources. Lu Xu overheard their conversation from not far away and he agreed with the person's view to a certain extent. As a matter of fact, it had gradually been recognized that cultivation aptitude was not the only thing that mattered, and many insiders of the network were aware that the so-called six-level power system was nothing but an imagined creation by people. Those without talent could still excel in cultivation, but their progress would be too time-consuming to be worthy of the heavenly network's investment. But that student's secret practitioner uncle must be boasting, because it was never an easy feat to acquire cultivation resources. Few were willing to travel large distances to purchase magical stones abroad and resell them in China for a profit. They had to put in so much effort just to make some money in exchange for a tiny bit of cultivation resources. The student added, smiling, at first my dad wanted me to join the army if I can't get into a university, because universities are no hope for me considering my shitty grades. But now, he has changed his mind. He wants me to follow that uncle and become a practitioner. Having heard that, his friends all admired his luck. Are you serious? Can you ask your uncle to teach us too? Now Lu Xu understood that his uncle was probably equipped with some lousy way of cultivation. Still, this was better than those pure metahumans. However, was that really teachable? Lu Xu was suddenly wondering about the true aim of the Heavenly Network's loosening control over civilian secret practitioners. Maybe they had hoped for a more prosperous non-governmental cultivation scene that could be tapped on during wartime. It was only Lu Xu's ill-founded speculation, though, because the Heavenly Network had full control over the situation. Apparently, the student was in a dilemma, but he also wanted to save his face. <laughs> I will ask my uncle about that. I will bring you to them if he is willing to teach you. Is he powerful? A person asked curiously. You don't say, the student said with a smug face, my uncle is rather famous in the Route 301 black market. He works for the Lord and the Venerable. His friends were stunned. Just a while ago, there was a proliferation of posts on the Golden Foundation forum regarding the black market. Hence, many of them knew that the Lord was actually their heavenly king Li Xiao. It would be impressive that his uncle worked for the heavenly king, but who was the venerable? Has your uncle met the venerable before? I saw on the Golden Foundation forum that the venerable's swordplay is unparalleled, yet he is only a young man. Is that real? Another person asked. The student replied in a mysterious tone. <laughs> Good question. My uncle has seen the Venerable with his own eyes. He said that the Venerable was only wearing a mask during his first appearance, but his true face was much younger. My uncle said he was in fact of the same age as us. My goodness. Are you kidding me? Same age as us yet as powerful as our principal Lee? That was an interesting story. doesn't mean to be happy Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heaven